this is a very, very exciting moment right here. This is like, um, you know, when you're a kid and they have like whatever the holiday calen calendars and you pop open the, the, um, the little doors and pull out the nasty, <laughs> the nasty candy. Here we go. Ready? I'm a few days late to this too. So we're going to move on from Caspian and on to, oh, wow. Look at that. Luca in Sierra National Forest, California. That looks like a big, fatty, yellow lab. Having a nice one in the National Forest, so. Anyways, we've moved on to April. Yeah, yeah, what is good? Welcome to week three of Cine 230 Remix Cultures. I'm out here in this beautiful weather getting bathed in pollen, feeling pretty frumpy. I've been needing a haircut for like months now. <laughs> it doesn't look like I'm gonna get one anytime soon, but uh, you know, we're out here at the farm. This is uh, tractor lecture number two. We're gonna talk about fair use today. Um, and this is gonna be super incredibly important for the rest of the term. Um, and I think something that's very applicable in your lives. I hope you all are well. Hope everything's good. I hope you're maintaining sanity, having some fun and hope to see you at our happy hours uh, every Monday at four o'clock on Zoom. So uh, last week was real nice, nice group of people. Anyway, so we're gonna talk about fair use today and that's gonna be the jam. I usually ask students, how many of you know about fair use? I've ever heard of it and I usually get like half of a half of a hand so um, you know so if you know anything about it text me hit me up email me zoom me whatever because um, I want to know where you know about it like how do you know about that um, I just you know some of the basics of fair use it's quite simple right um, <clears throat> it comes from common law so what common law is is not the Constitution not um, uh, legislation that was passed it basically over time through a series of um, you know court rulings precedents etc etc you know um, these things come out of out of that concepts legal concepts come out of that and then they are called what's called codified into law so the uh, fair use you know was a, a concept used as a defense that was codified in law in the 1976 copyright act don't need, don't need to know that what you really need to know though is that there's a fairly strong fair use um, precedent in, in 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 copyright specifically and a little bit of fair use in trademark and we'll talk about that when we start talking about what it means when you appropriate a Nike logo or appropriate a logo or a catchphrase even to make fun of it uh, when 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 and when does not fair use apply um, but it does not exist in patent you want to know that for the testy poo um, just so you, just so you know okay but the real important part is that this is a defensible position. So if you are ever sued for copyright infringement for a mashup you did, a beat you made, a parody you did, anything you did, this is your defense point, okay? And that's really what it is. And I mean, I had a video last week that I uploaded for this class that was flagged because it had, you know, a Coming to America clip in it. And so, uh, you know, I just wrote them back and said, you know, my use is fair, it's for educational purposes. So that's some, some other times where you may be able to just use it as a defense very simply, but it's definitely a legal defense that you can use in court if you have the gall to take it to court, okay? But the, the real question of fair use, and we'll get, we'll get deep into this throughout the whole term, is, is your work transformative? Meaning, did you add value? Did you build upon? Did you change the meaning of, or, did you simply exploit the aesthetics, the texture, the content of the original, and therefore your work is derivative? So if your work is derivative, it's likely not gonna be a fair use. If you are building upon the original in, in some form or way for commentary critique, you know, education, or, or something like that, your use is transformative. You're transforming the purpose. If you're exploiting the purpose of the original, you are creating a derivative work, therefore the markets are not transformative and therefore likely your uh, use is not, not, a, not a fair use, okay? 
And in the United States, fair use exceptions um, account for, you know, four and a half billion dollars, pro probably likely more than that of the U.S. economy. So you can think of everything from like Saturday Night Live, Tosh.0, E! Entertainment News, uh, anything that uses other people's copyrighted content, um, you know, and makes money off of it and which is a lot there's a ton of parody a ton of ridicule you could even look at things like let's play videos or movie reviews a lot of youtuber content uses other people's content for for criticism or commentary and that's totally legal so there's a lot of money to be made off of fair use and it's a very important concept uh, in the united states specifically okay so i'll go through the four factors four of fair use and you want to know these are not these are non-exclusive. Meaning, if uh, you know your use is fair in three of the factors, but unfair in one of the factors, it could be a not a fair use. Uh, you know, if your use is fair in three factors, you know, or two factors, you know, it still may not be a fair use. So the, so these things don't have to be. They're not contingent upon one another, but they're the four factors when you know if you're sued for copyright uh, infringement. Um, and you claim your use is fair, there's four factors they're gonna look at, okay? And I call this PNAM, P-N-A-M. You're gonna get this a ton throughout uh, this course, so, you know, put it up here, write it in your notebook, you know, whatever, type it down, you're gonna to wanna to know this. And I use a little PNAM chart, which, um, you know, uh, we can show you, probably right here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna point right here. So it's gonna appear right here, but you're gonna see it uh, on a lot of, um, you know, the examples we're gonna go through uh, today. So the first thing it's gonna look at is purpose and character of the use. That is your use. So if you use someone else's work, what was your intent? Was it for profit? Was it not for profit? Were you, um, you know, uh, were you adding to the original or simply exploiting it? Were you using it because you like it versus using it to make a comment on it, on the work? Um, you know, did you add new, ma new meaning or new value to it or did you simply exploit it? Those are, that's the factor there. If you don't exploit it, if you add value, add meaning, build upon, um, use it for, you know, reasons of commentary on the work itself, um, then your, your, your use will likely be fair in that factor. The next is the nature of the original work. So this looks at the work that you borrowed. So um, courts give higher um, you know, protection to uh, works of, of uh, fiction or creative works because there's a lot more labor that goes into, um, you know, shooting a movie or doing like an editorial photography shoot, uh, you know, or something like that, uh, you know, animating a cartoon versus like a news report versus a even a documentary um you know because a lot of times you're using b-roll footage that you've shot and i mean again there's a lot of work that goes into that um you know but it's you're not staging scenes or you shouldn't be you know um you know uh, photo documentary stuff for like news and sports stuff like that it has less protection because it's considered less creative less original because you don't stage it you don't light it you don't wardrobe um, the talent, etc. So this next factor, factor nature of the original, if you borrow from something that is a work of fiction, right, you're going to have a weaker fair use claim in this factor. If you borrow from a work of nonfiction, from the news or from a documentary or from, a, a, you know, a broadcast of a politician's speech or something like that, you'll have a stronger, um, you know, fair use claim. Okay. Uh, next, they'll look at amount and amount used. Um, a lot of people have this concept that you can use 10 seconds of a song or five seconds of this or whatever. Um, that, that's just a, you know, a myth. Um, but amount looks at two things. It looks at both quantitative, so how much did you take, and then probably more importantly, qualitatively. How important is what you took to the original? So you could take you know, 20 seconds of a two hour movie or 20 seconds of a two minute movie and it's not the most important part, your use may be fair in that factor. Or you could take two seconds from a two hour movie, 
right? Just a, such a small amount of time, but it is so important to that film. It's just the most recognizable part. It's the heart of the work. Um, and your use would probably, probably be unfair in, in, that, in that factor. So, it, you know, amount is how much did you borrow, okay? Um, and, and how important was it to the original? The last factor, and, and, and probably the most important factor. So the two most important factors are purpose. You know, what did you, what did you do? What's your intent? What did you do? Did you add value or is it derivative? And lastly, how does your use impact the market for the original? Or does it impact the market for the original? Does it replace it? Does it con uh, confuse consumers in the marketplace? Would they you know, buy your work thinking it was made by you know, uh, the person you, you borrowed from or something like that? Now, usually if your work is transformative in purpose, like you transform the meaning of the original use it in a different type of work to comment on it, you're likely transforming the market. Um, and an important point I like to make here is that you have to think about markets in two ways. Like the market for the original song, let's say a country song, right, is very different than um, a rap song or, you know, a hip hop beat or whatever. But if I sample a country song and flip it into like a hip hop beat, right, that's very different market like of consumers the theoretically. But like I use the country song because I like how it sounds or its texture, or how I could, you know, mess with it. And um, therefore I'm exploiting it. You know, you know what I'm saying? So the market really isn't different because there's a market for licensing samples. So you could infringe on that licensing market as well. So it doesn't necessarily mean a geographical or age-based demographic market, although it can mean that, you know, um, or like, you know, product market. Um, it, it, it can also mean literally like a market for licensing as well. So it's kind of like whatever. But typically, you know, if we move on to the next slide, so we're, we're checking out the fair use uh, slides. If you look at Panam, you know, again, What's your purpose? Is it for profit, not for profit? Um, are you adding value? Is it for public enrichment? You know, did you borrow from a factual creative work? That's nature of the original, right? Um, did you borrow a lot or a little bit? And how important is that borrowing, whether it's a lot or a little bit to the original? Um, and lastly, does it create market harm? This is just incredibly important because if you think of copyright as an economic incentive, um, you know, to incentivize creativity, um, you need to make money. So if your work replaces the original in the marketplace or someone buys your work um, because, yeah, you, you, you know, you, you, you borrow too good, like you took too much, you know, from the original and they think it's authored by the original author, um, you're going to run into problems. So market is, you know, P&M are going to be your most important factors.